and uh, which is a very important topic both for the examination and also for the day to day practice nowadays suddenly the reason is not very known to me there is a flux of the vesicovaginal fistula and the fistula in our day to day practice maybe due to excessive uh, surgical practice um, uh, hysterectomy ovarian surgery all these things and uh, numbers are getting increased and uh, we are getting more cases the complications and for that on that basis today's session is one of the very important session both for the student and also for the teachers to learn so many things because there are so many methods of uh, deal with genitourinary fistula whenever there is so many methods of dealing this uh, met, uh, method to try some condition none of the conditions are absolutely recommendable for all conditions that is why we um, have kept all the possible uh, that can, uh, can be treat uh, our intrauterine fistula with this i hand it over to dr kalyan sarka to welcome all of us good evening everyone it's a great pleasure to invite you to this class on gu fistula and who better to lead it lead this program than um, uh, than dr ranveer singh who's been a veteran of reconstructive urology in this part of the country with wide experience so uh, may i invite uh, may i request dr uh, ranveer singh to take this meeting on further without much ado this is a very important topic as dr ranjan there has just uh, elaborated thank you prof sir kalyan sir ka for the kind words and welcome everyone in this uh, teaching session it is a great pleasure that ranjan day and his team has taken the great pain and organized such a beautiful and nice program there for the students we didn't have the opportunity of all this during our trip we used to visit from college to college during our training program in 88 90 from cmc to manipal and all but here we are sitting in our home and getting the uh, experience of the teachers and the discussion a very nice thing so let us start the the view. all the students will be presenting the case the teachers of the concerned topic will be listening it and at the end of it if time permits i may ask questions or teacher may ask a few questions to the queries to the students and at the end any query they can ask to the particular teacher or to me no problem so can i request the first is student the case presentation we are having the case discussion an atrogenic vvf with mesh in the fistula strap and the student of this is dr piyush gupta and teacher santa ji dr santa ji so may i ask dr piyush gupta to come forward and present the case sir sir i have a small request Yes. Include two students per case, so that uh, there will be more circulation of participation of the students per. But case. name is there only for one. No, no, only sir. Only one let name. Let, is... let it be. Let it be. Okay. You uh, please. No problem. Two students or two so students. One. One will be go for the presentation and the clinical examination. The second will go for the investigations. Okay. If they can divide like that, it will be better and clear. Is it all right, Doctor Ranjan Day? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. <clears throat> Doctor Piyush Gupta, please. And who will be the next with you? Who is participating next? Or then? Who is the other name of the student? Ruma. Doctor Asutosh. 
Dr. Ashutosh. Ashutosh is the next one, yes. But only four names are here. Dr. Ram Kumar and Dr. Priyanku Pratik Sharma, yes. four of them. Yes. Only four. Oh, so you can just rotate all of all four okay. of them in all three cases. Okay. Go, oh, sir. Right. First of all, I have a small request to the student. They should introduce themselves from which center they are. And uh, uh, also the teacher, they should also introduce themselves shortly, briefly before we start the case. So, Piyush Gupta and Dr. Santa Jita. Hello, sir. Uh, hello, respected president, Sir Kalyan Sakar, sir. Dr. Rajan De, Dr. N.B. P.T. Singh. I am Dr. Shantajit. I am uh, currently working in a private institution at Imphal at Ras Medicity and Babina Oncology Clinic. Uh, I did my MCH from Rims Imphal in 2014 and finished my MCH in 2017. Right now I am working as a freelancer, not uh, <laughs> working in a college or any. Oh. Oh. That's a brief history. Thank you, sir. Right, welcome. Okay, welcome. Yes, Piyush. Dr. Yes, sir. Good evening. Uh, I am Dr. Piyush. I am third year resident from SSCM Kolkata. And Dr. Asutosh. Good evening, sir. I am Dr. Asutosh Kumar from IJMS Patna, third year resident. Okay. So, Piyush may start the case presentation. <clears throat> Hello, sir. Yes, your first case is hydrogenic VVF to a teacher. Yeah, I, I will I will upload my slides, sir. Yeah. Okay. Please share your screen. Can you see uh, can you see the screen, sir? Yes, yes. So, this is a case of uh, BVF with mace in the fistula tract. This data, data and ideas are sourced from one article by Mishra V.V. Tanbir Chaudhary, a transvaginal removal and repair of basal fistula due to mace erosion. We will come to brief history, sir. It's a 71-year-old female who complains of involuntary leakage of urine from the vagina of one year duration. Parity index of para 5, life 2, with spontaneous full term delivery. Patient had total abdominal hysterectomy 25 years back due to abnormal uterine bleeding. And patient had SUI 18 months back, for which she underwent a TOT with mass reinforcement. This is the brief history, sir. Uh, examination. Yes, uh, General physical examination, patient is at, it's normal. Mm -hmm. Then abdominal examination, there is a supravivic transverse scar of hysterectomy. Mm -hmm. so, yes. uh, Who will answer? Who will answer the queries? What are the next steps to be done? Oh, no, no, what is next step? What was done before the step? Please mute everybody excepting the speaker. Please. What was the in the history? What was the treatment given to this 71 year old lady? And she underwent this op surgery. What was the things that was done for her before she, uh, they started the treatment? Yes, sir. First, I would like to uh, more uh, more elaborate about the history that uh, okay. uh, why this surgery was done. Uh, at that time, what were the investigation was done, whether any type of, uh, uh, because it was done due to incontinence. So, related to incontinence, whether it was uh, evaluated uh, in a good manner, I will check these things from uh, her records, from her medical records. And regarding the surgery, which type of mesh was used at that time? I would also like to know about the type of mesh at that time, which was used. And uh, in the examination part, uh, I will uh, do the focused examination. I will check for the 
uh, uh, vaginal mucosa, any inflammation, any induration, uh, if the uh, presence of uh, uh, presence uh, metal metal status, and also the uh, also about the uh, mesh, how uh, how much amount of mesh is uh, seen uh, through the pervaginal examination, and also I would like to do the cystoscopy whether to uh, with, to check whether there is perforation of mesh in the uh, urethra or the bladder also. So, uh, Doctor Shanta. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, can you can you help this boy? That what yeah, are yeah. the things? Yes. Uh, she had 20, 25 years back. She had abnormal hysterectomy. That was for yeah. abnormal uterine bleeding. Okay. We don't have much history, but from the history, this for the it abnormal was uterine. It was benign. Yes, it was benign. Okay. Then, she, uh, 18 months back, she had SUI, yes. for which a TOT was placed okay. with poly, poly, uh, polypropylene monofilament mass. Polypropylene monofilament mass. Okay, right, sir. Uh, it was performed by a gynecologist. This report is <laughs> presented by a uh, gynecologist. So, uh, okay, so do we can't we can't expect uh, the standard of the urologist. So, what are the things you you like to have uh, this case for the treatment before we go for the surgery? Yes, sir. I first I would like to uh, check uh, about the incontinence whether uh, it is. Uh, overflow incontinence, whether it is now uh, stress incontinence or it is uh, incontinence due to uh, overflow or due to any fistula formation. So uh, that, I would that, like, I will ask uh, related to these things in the history, whether this is uh, this incontinence is only due to any uh, stress part, uh, while sneezing, coughing, or it is uh, this continence is uh, in the 24 hours, whether there is normal voiding in between or not. So by this thing, I would like to rule out whether it is a continuous overflow or stress incontinence. So you mean demonstration of the physical finding is important part when we for the stress incontinence. Is alone yes. or is yes. associated yes. with other things? Giggle yes. or it is really yes, associated sir. only with the stress incontinence. You have to demonstrate the physical part of this. Okay. Anything else? You would like to know? Uh, then, uh, yes, sir. I would also like to uh, rule out from the history whether there is active urinary tract infection or any uh, vaginal infection or not by asking her whether there is any uh, dysuria or any discharge for vagina so that I can work up from the history routine. part only rule out the infectious part. Routine, complete workup. From the history part only, sir. Routine, yes, sir. workup is important with the parcel. With the culture yes, positivity and symptom symptoms. Okay. Yes. I'll go for the next slide, uh, sir. Yes. Next. Oh yes, yes, please. Uh, yes. Anything else? You like to know? Then yes. Then with the routine examination. This is examination. This look at this is examination. You learn guys, maybe. So you have you have uh, missed that one, na? The speculum examination you have missed the speculum yes. examination. Then PV examination you have told about the PV examination, but uh, you have not told about the speculum examination. You have told that about the what uh, you will feel the vaginal erosion and all that can be done, but we have to see with the speculum examination also. Yes. In the speculum yes. examination we see a mass erosion of one into one point five into one point five centimeter. In the middle third of the anterior vaginal wall with frank leak of urine from the erodial side. Okay. And this uh, posterior vaginal wall and wall were atropic. So, what steps we will do? What next, next steps? Sir, next, I will, yes, sir. Next, first, I will go with the routine investigation in form of urine routine microscopy and uh, culture sensitivity of that patient. And uh, after that, I would like to, uh, as as it is uh, erosion of the mesh in the vagina scene, but there is also leakage of urine is there. So I will proceed after the urine culture and sensitivity. I, will, I would like to proceed for urine cystoscopy examination to check whether there is perforation in the lower uh, lower urinary tract is there or not. Perforation of mesh is, uh, mesh is there or not. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Next slide will go. So, so you have told about cystoscopy, okay? So what are the things you want to look in the cystoscopy? What are the things you want to see? 
Uh, now, patient is in OT for a cystoscopy. What things you will look into? Uh, sir, firstly, uh, I would check about the whether the meatus is normal or any uh, scars, stenosis are there. Then the in the urethroscopy part, the uh, what is the uh, what is the status of urethral mucosa? If there is any uh, uh, mesh is present, mesh is perforated in the urethra. If it is perforated, uh, for, at what distance from the meatus it is present, and how much part of the uh, mesh is visible in the meatus? And after that, I will check for the uh, neck of the bladder neck status and the bladder status, whether any part of mesh is present in the bladder or not. And the if it is present, then its relation with the uretric orifice and also the overall status of the bladder for any features of obstruction, for any features of malignancy or any features of uh, inflammation. So in history, one was asking question whether history of diabetes, bladder yeah, yeah, there, there, is, there is no history of diabetes. Okay, okay, right. So you got it. So now these are the things when you four centimeter retra, how much time you spend to see all these things what you are talking. Anyway, but retroscopy is also important part what we are looking for. And the most important thing there will be to see the you enter the bladder or still is in the urethra. Use. No, I, sir, after checking the urethra, I have entered into the bladder. Okay, so what are the things you are looking there? Sir, in the bladder, I will first check for the uh, meatus, uh, uretric orifice, and yes. any if, if, if there is any fistulous opening, then its distance from that uh, orifice, or if there is mesh is visible, then its distance from the orifice, and also the uh, if there is any type of uh, malignancy, growth, or the status of the bladder mucosa. That is all there. And also, in lastly, la lastly, the uh, capacity of the uh, bladder. Compliance with the bladder. Yes, bladder, Rough capacity. bladder capacity. Yes, bladder capacity was around Roughly 200 ml. Bladder capacity. Yeah, bladder capacity was around 200 ml for this patient. How much? 200, sir. Okay. So, this is the cystoscopic finding. Okay, sir. Cystoscopic finding. You can see uh, in the picture, there is a mass erosion in the bladder wall. Yes, sir. Both uretric and orifices were normal and distant from the fistula. What about basinoscopy? Do you, will you do routinely in such cases? Uh, yes, sir. I would, I would also like to uh, check uh, for the... Because sometimes there are many, uh, not a single opening. Sometimes it is. it may also associate it with uh, vesicovaginal fistula also. Urethrovaginal, you mean to say urethrovaginal? No, sir. It is only com already communicating with the urethra, vesico, with the bladder also. Okay, okay. Urethro and vesico co so combined. Urethrovesical fistula, urethrovaginal fistula, and vesico vesical fistula. Both. both yes, sir, both. There, there is any other fistula or not? Okay. Let us. This mass erosion was seen in the anterior vaginal wall in the middle third of vagina. Yes, sir. It didn't involve the this one, the, uh, the urethra, okay? okay so, next question is, uh, when will you want to do an MCUG in such case? Uh, sir, after getting the culture sensitivity normal, no growth in the culture sensitivity, and the infection is settled down, uh, then I will proceed for MCUG after three after three weeks. No, no, no. Uh, what are the things that you want to look or when you want to do MCUG in such a case? This is the question I want to ask. Huh? When Sir, do you want check. to do it? No, no. It's, it's already obvious now. It's already obvious from the, uh, this one, from the uh, cystoscopy as well as vaginoscopy. But when do you want to do MCUG in such a case? I'll share it. Okay. These are the indications when fistula is not localized, but the PV most examination. of the time, yes, mm -hmm. most of the time, we'll in the you know, next of part of discussion, we'll go and see that in such a complicated cases, we like to have the CT. So we'll go in the next, but here, 
these are the indications which written crystal not look like you are not you are not sure you have the uh, logical evidence the normal view and the lateral view yes that why 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 lateral films because the bladder and the vaginal part overlap so in yes. the ap view we, we are not able to uh, comment on the leakage so that's why oblique or lateral view mm -hmm. okay and in the voiding phase you may see a small fistula no? like sometimes uh, small fistula they may not be visible during the this one if the, during the voiding phase small fistula may be visualized okay so advantages what are the advantages of doing an mcug in such a case uh, sir even a very small fistula due to pressure can be visualized yes, yes. and if associated any uh, another fistula which is not obvious on the tv finding or cystoscopy finding which can be uh, which we can miss also it will be uh, visualized on this part and uh, the about the lower one third of yes yes bladder capacity, bladder capacity bladder neck and cystocele yes sir about the bladder capacity we can also comment by the mc okay. So, any role of apoptotic imaging in such a case? So is there any role of apoptotic imaging? No, sir. In this case, if on cystoscopy, jets are clear and it is only vaginal part is uh, due to mesh part, then there is no role of IVP. Okay. So if how, many, system, how many percent you do you expect? Some uh, uretro, 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 uretro fistula, how many percentages sir, do you expect? Sir, in a case of BVF, you know, hydrogenic or any other cause, we expect uh, 10 to 12 percent of cases of uh, uretro vaginal fistula. But this is due to mesh, I think, in this case, okay, okay. uretric injury is not very okay. much common. During, during your cystoscopy part, if you did the RGP at that time, most of the time we may skip, but here he has not shown the IV, this RGP, so it is better for the institutional purposes to get an uh, upper tract image. It's a quite difficult case, but you know, routinely it is not done. One is clear, can is RGP, catheters, and there is no direct contrast activation during the RGP. I can, you can proceed without I'm, I'm upper tract image. But it's better oh. to get it done, yes. Now uh, all routine investigations are done. Everything is uh, within normal limits. Everything, all investigations are uh, done. So what man? What will? How you manage this patient? So, so uh, sorry, sir. I think some network problem. Sorry, sir. Oh, no, no. Uh, I mean to say, like all the routine investigations for operation or what, whatever we have done, we, they are within normal limit. Routine investigations then uh, all are ready okay so what how will you manage this case uh, sir uh, uh, i will uh, first i will counsel the patient uh, that this problem is due to uh, your previous positioning of mesh which was also done due to the your problem main problem of sui so it is a complication of that surgery so for this part uh, we would like uh, i would like to remove your this mesh which can further lead to that part of stress urinary incontinence in future. Hello? No. When there are two aspects of the management, one the aspect of the patient whom you are going to treat, second the doctor who has done this case. So once you show this, is, this problem is due to the wrong surgery or mistake or like that, this is due to a mess, no. In this sort of surgery, what was done for you are the best. Mess erosion takes place and it is already established fact. That is a complication of the mess erosion. Okay. Mess erosion. So now these are the steps which I like to do with you. So training has a two part. One, the case management and one, the saving your partner, I mean, a friend, colleague okay. who has done it. So never yes, say in the front of the patient that he has done the mistake and this is due to complication due to mistake. He has done the right thing for you. And this can happen with anybody. And we yes, will take in this step. These are the steps which are going to take it. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, so in this case, we have to 
uh, we have to uh, manage two things. First, the mesh. We have to remove the mesh part, and second, we have to repair the fistula. So it is a complicated case as uh, because it is due to mesh perforation. So we have to remove the part of mesh and also to repair the VVF part with the use of any in interposition flap in between. So uh, I'll just go. I will just uh, go to the next slide and uh, inform what the uh, these people have done. Nah? Those who written the article. So what they have done was uh, they have excised the mesh vaginally, creating a two into two centimeter rent in the bladder and vagina, which liquid catheter was placed. After six weeks, they have done a cysto ureteroscopy with construction of fistula with bladder capacity of around 200 ml. Then they have done the routine investigation again, like ultrasound. Then, just for the sake of the this one uh, completeness, they have done IVU also, IVU, which were all within normal limits. So uh, now, what you this one uh, the mass has been excised, okay? And uh, what will you do after this one? Use. Yes, sir. Mesh exercise designally and repeat this. You have to wait. Sir, after. Uh, as, as, and that part is okay. And in the repeat system uh, uh, graphy, uh, there is contraction of the fistula with bladder capacity of 200 ml. So at six weeks, there is uh, still uh, sir, contraction of fistula. It is. I think it's, it means it, it has become a bit smaller. It, but it is still present. Yes, yes, yes. It is still present. So after six weeks, so, uh, it is still present and also the bladder capacity is 200 ml. Then I will counsel the patient for open surgery with augmentation of bladder. Is there any chance that uh, this... Uh, operation could have been done simultaneously, like excision of the mass along with repair at the same time. Could, I, could it have been done? Sorry, sir. No, no, it should not be done simultaneously. Let the fistula heal, the inflammation completely subside after you remove the foreign body. This will be ideal. Otherwise, you have to excise the more tissue to get the normal tissue. Uh, this larger them. So that was the best part which they have done. And uh, let us see that what result they are uh, trying to pre uh, present with us. So uh, what type of repair? Yes. Mm. You what time uh, uh, already in the history we have seen that this the fistula was not located uh, in the dome or it was located rather it was located in the trigon. As well as it was uh, in the vagina, it was in the anterior third. What pre what uh, method will you prefer? Whether open, uh, op I mean, which type of surgery will you prefer? Uh, a question sir. from Dr. Kalyan Sarkar. Kalyan Sarkar has a question. No question as such. I think Manish Kumar asked the question. Well, it's, a, it's an answer, sir. It's an answer. It's an answer. I would fill the bladder with saline with the yes, yes. Uh, vaginal finger, including the fistula. I don't know if anyone of the faculty has any better ideas. Okay. I think with a large fistula, the, the, the bladder is uh, it's difficult to fill it up. And then at operation, then you've got to decide on the spot if you think uh, bladder is very contracted. That's a... Sir, there is a way of doing it. If you can insert a Foley's catheter in the yes uh, for, uh, through the fistula, treat it with fifty milliliter of water and pull it, then you can fill the um, uh, bladder as you want to see. So coming back to the question, what what type of repair will you prefer? Uh, sir, yes. In, yes, sir, in this patient, I would like to uh, go with open surgery and repair of fistula with bladder augmentation. After counseling of patient regarding the pros and cons of the procedure. Uh, 
In this uh, in this patient, they have actually done uh, this one. Uh, France. Hello. Yeah, in, this, in this article, what they've done is they have done uh, transvaginal repair with Marcia's flap because it was a low lying uh, end in the trigone area. But sir, already the tissue uh, tissue parts is very scarred because previously it was done POT. Then after that, the scar excision. So there was very much inflamed and the part was very much scarred. So in that part, transvaginal repair. I think uh, Saranjan Dev will explain better with, <laughs> during his presentation, <laughs> in the video presentation. Yes, I will discuss all these yeah, things know. during my video presentation. This one for the gynecologist, they may do, but if he goes to the urologist, they will go through the abdominal because the area, the boy is correct, fuse is correct, that, uh, that area is not very healthy and uh, it's difficult. Or such a case is third case, yes. Types, uh, what types will you prefer if you if you are doing a repair? No, this one, uh, yes, sir. Which one will you prefer, sir? In this, I will, uh, I because uh, I will do it multi layered flap with interpositional uh, uh, flap placement because it is a complex fistula. So, I would like it like to do it in multi layer flap, mainly the RAS technique. <laughs> Oh, any 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 difference between the Raj and this Webster technique? Any difference? Yes, sir. Uh, in the Webster technique, we used to excise the epithelial lining of the tray. Basically, we excise the fistula tray. Okay. okay. <laughs> any advantage that you know of doing such a case with this trans uh, with this uh, vaginal repair? Any advantage of doing with vaginal repair? Yes, yes sir. Less morbid. Uh, low. Uh, less morbid. And uh, the stay time in the hospital is also very less, bleeding less, and the complications are also very less. Some disadvantages are also there, no? like vulval, vulval shortening will be there, this peronia. Please mute. But we are not, not familiar with the anatomy of the some some extra extra mute, extra please, wait. please mute all of the speakers, excepting the examiner and the students and the moderator, please. Ruma, please do it. So, as you have told already, there are some advantages like short OT time, less pain, early recovery, no need to bivalve the bladder. But so there are some disadvantages like this when you do a surgery in the vagina, there will be bulbal shortening, then this peronia, and sometimes as urologists, we are not very familiar with this anatomy. Yes, sir. So, please, uh, uh, we are about to finish, but which, uh, what are the abdominal approach indications and what are the disadvantages? Please tell in brief. No? Uh, we, are, sir, we, are approaching our, we are completing our time, 7.30. Yes, we have only one or two minutes. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. sir. Yes. If, it, if it is, if the fistula is large and on the dome, uh, if it is, uh, if we are doing it with any other procedure, we, we have to uh, augment the bladder or if there is any stone, if there is, uh, if it is due to any malignancy, Post, post radiotherapy or post malignancy complex fistula is there. Okay. What and are some, do the, yes, sir. And what are the disadvantages of doing such so a More game? morbid, more OT time, more bleeding, more pain. Any any flaps but you know? So the trans, any flap for the trans abdominal approach? Yes, sir. Uh, trans abdominal, we can use mental flap. We can use peritoneal flap. We can also use... Uh, uh, free uh, bladder mucosa, uh, free graft, and also the rectus of the muscle or sheep graft. Mm. Okay. So if uh, so, if you are very familiar with all the techniques, like you yeah. are familiar with uh, laparoscopy, also open surgery or robotic, which one you will will you prefer? Will you prefer from your end, uh, sir? You are familiar with all techniques. You are very good. Okay. Uh, open also, then laparoscopy also. Which one you will prefer? Will you prefer from your uh, side? Sir, I will go for laparoscopy. Okay. Okay. So this one will uh, will skip, I think. <laughs> Everyone okay. knows. No, it's a, it's a nice 
one thing you remember in life that whatever things you have done learn the best you practice that all you read all you tell in the exam but in the practice you must do the thing who, are, who can do, do the best for the patient that is would be the take home message for all in for the all the students very good you are well done okay and we can go for the next sir there are few more questions i believe okay. Uh, Just one question. Maybe allowed. Just one question. Uh, yes. Any role of anticholinergics in yes, such sir. a case? Yes, sir. Uh, we have got lots of anti anticholinergics plus new uh, this one of beta three, may have background and all that. So which one you would prefer? Uh, sir, anticholinergics. Like solifenacins and all. Do you, will no, you solifenacin, derifenacin, sir. Form solifenacin or derifenacin. What about this Mirabegron? Are you are you familiar with Mirabegron? We are familiar, but in our hospital, we only used to give solifenacin or derifenacin, sir. Okay, okay. So this uh, this completes a set of questions for Piyush. Thank you for your patient hearing. And I have a comment. I have a comment. The comment is that you know, along with anticholinergics, estrogens have a role in yes, uh, preparing these patients for surgery, mm -hmm. uh, especially if they're post. And about this lady has a dysphectomy. We don't know if she has her ovaries and what the vaginal tissues are, you know. And if there are changes of uh, atrophic changes, then in the waiting period for the definitive repair, vaginal estrogens um, uh, may improve your yes. outcomes of that. It was, it, was, it was discussed in the beginning itself that this 71 lady, what are the things that were done for her before the abdominal yes. this, uh, tape surgery was done? So that, that was in the beginning itself, in the history time, we have discussed all this, this point. Yes. Thank you, both the teacher and the students. Okay. Next is uh, and Sanjay Chaudhary. Asutosh and Ram Kumar can come. Yes, sir. Dr. Ashutosh, sir, from IJMS. Yes. Okay. Okay. Dr. Sanjay Chaudhary, 23 year old lady with obstetric VVF. Dr. Sanjay Chaudhary, please. Dr. Sanjay, Dr. Sanjay Chaudhary. Is not here. Ruma, please call him. Ruma, please call him. So we can go for the next till he yes, comes. Yes, I am calling. Okay. We'll go for the next. Once he comes, he can join in his time. Has he, has he sir, Dr. Uh, Sendu, send you the presentation? Dr. Choudhury has sent you the presentation? No, sir. Let's yes, go doctor. for the next one. Krishna, okay. Krishna oh. and Dumayati. And Ram Kumar and Asutos both can join it. Good evening, everybody. Am I audible? Legal case discussion. Yes, RTS. Post you RT. Students should introduce and teachers should introduce themselves before starting the uh, session. I am Dr. Sandhu Professor, Dr. Hospital. IPJMR, Hospital. Sir, I am Dr. Asutosh Kumar. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Who is the third person? Yes, I mean, second sir. person? Ram Kumar. Ram Kumar. Ram Kumar. Where is Ram Kumar? Dr. Chaudhary. Dr. Ram Kumar. He is not there. Okay, so I start. Dr. Kishan Maiti. Please go ahead. Post RT VVF. <clears throat> Dr. Kishnendu Maiti, please. Sir, 
can you see my yes 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 Hello? well seen well seen clear so it's a 56 year old film presented in our outpatient department to the complaints of continuous urine leakage for the last two months she had no normal body arch all the time continuously leaks urine in the past history she was diagnosed as an advanced case of csrv for which she received radiotherapy 28 session 18 months before that was completed and for the last after 16 months she had some bladder bleeding problem and some bleeding pier for better Once she is having continuous urine leakage. She is non diabetic. Urine was dribbling out of the intruder continuously. Please mute. Ruma, please mute others. Ruma, please mute others. Skin was excoriated due to urine spillage and on cystoscopy, 2 into 2 centimeter intratrigonal fistula was seen and there were evidence of uh, radiation cystitic changes inside the bladder. Bladder capacity was small and the fistula was closer to right urinary orifice, at 1 centimeter air from the fistula and 2 centimeter air from the left urinary orifice. This is the real time cystoscopy. You can see the right urinary orifice close to fistula. There are features of radiation cystitis inside the bladder. And this is the Dinoscopic features. You can see the fistula. So, the students, what is your diagnosis? Who is the student? The prasutos. Please. Unmute yourself, Dr. Asutos. Am I audible, sir? Yes, yes, audible. So, sir, this patient has, has since this patient has a history of radiotherapy for CA cervix, and after 18 months back, and after that, she has presented with continuous urinary leak with no widening in between, no widening urge in between. So, most likely, it's a case of post radiotherapy vesicovaginal fistula. What is the cause of this fistula? Because patient had radiotherapy 18 months before. Not now. The radiotherapy was a 28 month standard radiotherapy to grade each session that completed 18 months before. Why the fistula developed so many months before, after? Sir, basically, the effect of radiotherapy manifests later on after come after exposure to radiotherapy there is obliterative endarteritis that develop that will lead to ischemia of the tissue and that may cause fistula formation subsequently usually this fistula develop maybe one to two year after radiotherapy so there is delayed presentation it mostly the radiation fistula develop at least one to two year after radiotherapy the radio therapy session are complete. Basically, this is ischemic because of ischemia, obliterative endarteritis, and ischemia. This is so dangerous. So, what is the incidence after this radiotherapy in case of CSR? What is the incidence in all cases? Does the patient have?
Sir, exact incidence, I don't remember. It's around 10%, 5 to 10%. No, but it's deepers for the external MV radiotherapy or endocavitary radiotherapy. Is there any difference? Those patients who are getting this endocavitary radiotherapy needle treatment and those patients getting the external beam radiotherapy, is there any difference in incidence? Sir, it's more with uh, indo, indo, indo cavity radiotherapy because bladder is just opposed to cervix. It's so. Okay. So is there pre or pre radiotherapy? Can you predict that these patients should develop uh, radiation fistula? Is there any prediction? Can anyone predict it before giving radiotherapy? Is it possible? That will be helpful for the patient counseling. Sir, so usually the one thing is how, what is the nutritional build of the patient and what is the diagnosis? The, suppose the patient has presented with CS cervix, then at what stage she has presented and we are opting radiotherapy. The stage of disease as well as nutritional status of the patient prior to subjecting her to radiotherapy. These things we can take into consideration. These are the general conditions. When the features of radiation, cystitis, radiation, proctitis, these complications would be much more. But exactly which patient will develop radiation fistula, it's difficult to interpret or difficult to predict before giving the therapy. It's almost impossible. Now, this patient is having radiation fistula. What will you do? This patient has come to our OPD. How will you evaluate this patient and how will you treat this patient? So this patient has come with a radiation fistula. First of all, I would like to go with routine urine investigation, sir. I will do a routine urine investigation as well as micro, microscopy of the urine and urine culture. After, after, that, after this report come to be normal, I will go with routine blood investigation that will include CBC, KFT, so that I have the idea of what is the hemoglobin of the patient and uh, LFT to look for serum albumin. Apart from that, KFT in which I will look specifically for serum creatinine. And uh, after that, sir, after that, since the fistula is close to close to ureteric orifice, it's it's just one centimeter away to right ureteric orifice. So maybe I will go for an upper tract imaging, sir, in form of ultrasonography to look for mm -hmm. whether involvement of whether there is any involvement of upper tract any hydronephrosis on right side or left side apart apart from that sir at the time of further in further in further investigations that since cystoscopy is done i will i will must do a cystoscope a biopsy of the fistula tract sir at the time of cystoscopy and i will biopsy wait for from, the excuse me biopsy from where from cystoscopically or during uh, vaginal speculum examination? From both sides, sir. During vaginoscopy also and from during cystoscopy also. Biopsy from where? The margin of fistula tract, sir. Margin of the fistula tract. As well as I will, during cystoscopy, I will look for what what is the capacity of bladder, what is the a status of this, inflammation. This, you can see this is because of radiation cystitis. This bladder capacity is not so much. You you can see from the video. Okay, because of radiation yes, cystitis, it is likely to be smaller capacity. Yes, sir. You should take biopsy from both. Suppose the patient objects that go biopsy from one side, either from bladder or from vagina. In that case. Which side will you prefer? Sir, from vagina, sir, because that is the origin of malignancy. Yes, because patient had CSRP. Primary disease was CSRP. Our, 
apart from that sir since it's a small capacity bladder and if the upper tract imaging come to be come to be normal and everything uh, i mean i mean cbc kft and lft are within normal limit and the biopsy that has taken from yes. vagina that comes to be normal like showing fibrocollagenous tissue no viable malignancy in that case sir we will plan for surgery and we will tell the patient specifically counsel the patient that we are going to operate for a post radiation vvf so this this vvf repair will have a guarded prognosis like the even in base stand the success can be anywhere between 40 to 50% so i will tell the patient that i will tell the high chances of recurrence it's going to be a complicated surgery yes apart from that sir i will also tell the patient about the need of ancillary procedures need of ancillary procedures sir during during the vvf repair since the bladder capacity of this patient is a small so we will also tell the patient that at the time of while doing vvf repair we will we will assess regarding involvement of ureteric corpus and patient may need a patient in this case since the bladder capacity is a small sir so patient will require an augmentation cystoplasty along with that since the right ureteric orifice is only 1 cm away from away from away from fistula site sir so doing fist so during doing during doing fistula repair sir we may also need to do a right ureteric orifice reimplantation along with augmentation sir and if you are going to which part of the bowel would you choose for augmentation in case of radiation cystitis with a small capacity bladder if you are going to augmentation which part of bladder jejuna ileum colon which part will you prefer and why sir i will choose ileum sir but patient received radiotherapy 20 eight session so ileum is the common part of the small intestine that lies in the pelvis so that is going to be irradiated during the radiotherapy so the my next choice will be sir to go for a sigmoid cystoplasty sir in that case i will tell the patient that i will use sigmoid colon for augmentation Sigmoid also that lies in the pelvis. So you choose the part of the part of the intestine that is outside this true or false pelvis because that is not irradiated in the radiotherapy during the this external radiotherapy procedure. Okay. Transverse colon is probably better choice because that is not usually included in the radiotherapy field. Yes, sir. Need to. Go for augmentation. Transverse colon probably would be better because that is not irradiated. Because our aim during the surgery is that avoid the organ which has been incorporated during the radiotherapy field. Isn't it? Yes. So in this patient, what will you do? Which operation would you prefer? Abdominal or Designer, which approach would you prefer, sir? I will prefer abdominal approach, sir, because since the bladder capacity is small, I will consider for ancillary procedure. And apart from that, I need some interposition tissue in between the graft because this uh, because the vascularity is very much compromised. So we can we have lot of option for interposition interposition graft in between, like we can give omentum or. rectus abdominis and all that and apart from that we can concomitantly deal 
the small cap city bladder also although the it is going to be difficult since it's a infra trigonal location so it's going to yes, be difficult but post radiotherapy fistula bladder capacity is small oh but it is not a thimble bladder capacity is definitely small but it's not a thimble bladder uh, sir uh, dr romin sik sir sir would you like to go for uh, abdominal or vaginal approach in this patient most of the hello yes sir yes sir we can hear you yes sir sir uh, Ranjan, they said, sir, would you like? Start, first of all, I want to tell him for radiation induced uh, VVF, we need a proper, very, very vascularized and very robust interposition tissue. And for that is the best option is the gracilis graft, which is most commonly taken from the thigh of the patient, which is not at all radiated in the during the process of. Uh, uh, radiation and in my opinion I would go definitely from the vagina with possible um, gracilis graft interposition in between to get the best result. Because abdominal, abdominal approach is uh, should not be preferred. Trigonal, for the infratrigonal uh, fistula, abdominal approach with a mental graft with specifically radiation induced uh, Mm, uh, fistula is not ideal. Yes. The renal approach should be your first. Okay, and sir. The right vertebral orifice is close to that. Prior stenting or monoge stenting, DJ or monoge stenting is an important aspect. Prevent urethral or to diagnose any urethral injury. And as they said, I have suggested. Non irradiated interposition on the mass is fair or better, yes, it is fair. Okay. So, what are the complications? Sir, complication can be first of all, we, we have gone for a vaginal root, vaginal, vaginal, we have preferred vaginal route for repair of this fistula. So, Post -operative, in post-operative period, patient can have bladder spasm after catheter removal. He can have frequency. Apart from that, we have explained the patient that there can be recurrence of this fistula. Apart from that, since we have preferred vaginal route, so there can be re reduced capacity of vagina and she can have some coital difficulty. Later on, we need to counsel the patient regarding that, that this may happen after the surgery. So More than 50% failure rate. So that is the most common complications. Even after yes, best effort and best result, more than 50% failure rate. That is the most common complications. Apart from that, there is associated other injury, organ injuries. So suppose, not in this patient, another patient on the same kind of patients, patient had radiotherapy two years before, now the patient is developing continuous urinary leakage. Along with that, patient is complaining that some urine, patient can assess that some urine is coming per rectum also. Not in this patient, another patient. How will you evaluate that, that patient? Sir, in two that case, might be there, there may be a complicated fistula that had in that has on one side communicated to vagina and on that another side that has communicated to rectum. So might be a recto vesical fistula as well as a vesico vesico vaginal fistula. We are dealing with such a case. In that case, sir, first of all, I will go. I will go, sir, for a CT triple phase CT of CT abdomen along with urography plate, sir, to look for. What is the status? What is, what is, whether there is any connection with, along with that, we can also consider that administration of 
rectal contrast sir so that there can be some passage of contrast between rectum and bladder and a good quality vcug sir vcug that will depict what whether what is the communication with the rectum and what is the communication with bladder and all and after explaining the explaining the patient that since you are having a complicated fistula we will proceed for repair sir what kind of repair yeah. suppose this patient on evaluation found that it's a vesico vagino rectal fistula suppose this fully of us after the Yes, sir. Your rationality of doing the surgery or steps. Any role of diverse. Sir, first of all, I will consider the patient. I will explain the patient since it's a comp complicated fistula. We can consider him for diversion colostomy. Along with that, we will repair whatever is the communication between. First of all, you again in case of like. is radiation uh, bba take a biopsy from the vaginal side and whether there is recurrence or not because that is most important if there is recurrence the whole scenario is changed yes, first go to biopsy if the biopsy is negative then you consider for this reconstruction and diversion what kind of diversion rectal diversion this yes. enteric diversion what kind of enteric sigma sigmoid colostomy sir and after that we will deal with this vesico rectal fistula sigmoid is not a very good choice because the reason i have already discussed that because of the radiotherapy in the pelvic region sigmoid may be frozen so better to get bowel outside this radiation field so transverse colon It'd be a better choice, sir. Anjan, they said, or Doctor Ramit Singh said, sir, please unmute. Hello. Hello. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. When we are considering for enteric diversion in the case of radiotherapy in the CS service patient, sigmoid. Yes. Sigmoid is not better. It's always uh, the area which has not been radiated. Always. Yes. Sir, may I make a small comment, sir? Okay. Sir, in such case, the best option is the gastric. interposition from the greater curvature if we can take the um, triangular flap and we can bring it down to uh, the bladder for augmentation because that is the advantage it is acidifying that uh, urine will be acidifying and at the same time it is much more away from the uh, this thing Uh, from the place of the <laughs> place of the irradiation this the gastric uh, interposition is possibly the best option for this kind of irradiated cases i have seen only one um, case doing like that this by one of my very respected teacher prof dr omio what's his name he is a very senior oncologist uh, he I, i don't exactly recall his name uh, just a minute he was in cancer hospital mm, i just cannot recall his name i saw only i have not done anything but i, I saw him doing a gastric interposition graft in the and in his very small hospital sms marwari hospital and i followed that patient in the mm, three years after that and the patient was doing well that is my small experience i have shared that in a this kind of a case gastric interposition mm, will be a better option than any of the colon no no experience of that of gastric interposition no 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 experience 
eight o'clock. Yes. Yes, for lands of Gaza. What about uh, what about uh, uh, urinary diversion? What are the indications for uh, urinary diversion into an ileal conduit? I mean, maybe this is a question the students uh, will be asked in such a situation. No, I was going to ask it. Better you asked. It's very good. In urinary diversion. Yes, Asutos, anything you want to say? Sir, urinary diversion can be considered if the patient is having advanced malignancy. In that case, we can consider for urinary diversion, sir, when the life expectancy is limited. Apart from that, sir, the fistula is too large to consider for repair, sir. We can't bring the age anatomically. In that case, also, we can consider for diversion, sir. That will improve quality of life of the patient. Can be done in the form of bilateral PCN, sir, along with occlusion of urinary orifices, or it can be done as sigmoid urethrostomy or mains two pouch. Yes, um, mains two pouch. That was a, the large fistula, bladder neck involvement, poor socioeconomic condition, who can't afford all the time coming to the hospital and getting it done. In, in all such cases, even in the larger fistula, it should be for the men's two pouch, which we are talk, uh, talking about, is the better for them. They can't afford the bags, they can't afford the all things removed from the town. So these are the cases who should be get better off with the men's pouch too. But with the, all the precautions which you know, the uh, electrolytes, yearly, um, at least the polynoscopy, so these things should be done. Uh, once you do the nails to part. So that is better for them for the long-term success. But that sir, I have a small thing to inter intervene at this point that using ileum in a post-radiated case to create is not, a very good any, is not a very good idea. No, 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 not here. I am talking of the where we do the diversion. Here in yeah. post-radiated cases, is always avoid, always avoid the radiated area. Yes. Please, yes. this is the first thing in mind, that always avoid the radiated area. Sure. <clears throat> I am talking of a big fistula with bladder neck involvement. Long duration of the 15 year, 20 years. I had a works done workshop here in my hospital. Dr. Ganesh was operating and he opted for case that he did the men's two pots. Everything was available at that time, whatever available in 2002, I am saying. And he did the men's two pots. The next case he asked me to do next day because he was leaving Patna. And he asked me to do the men's pot. Still this patient, after 20 years, I operated her. And the husband has left her for the 20 years. And she married after two years, she came that I am got married, sir. In 40 years age, she got married. This was the men's box too for her, that boon. So th this is very good for those, those cases where the bladder involvement is there and the large fist fly is there. See, I see metrophenol, lot of the muscle. So you have to do the uh, uh, solid work <coughs> for them. Yes. Anything else, sir? Math is up. Any more discussion you have on this case? Uh, I think the message for the postgraduate should be that in if there is uh, you know malignancy, then uh, diversion is the only option actually. Uh, and if there is a failure of primary surgery uh, in this sort of irradiated situations. Failure of the primary BBF surgery. Well, that is a good option. Palliative, good option. That is that we can say. But always, we should always avoid the radiated area. <laughs> radiated area. Yes. Now we can call the Kaushik Sarkar because Sanjay Chaudhary has not reported. I think Dr. Sanjay let, Chaudhary has not let reported. Me, let me let me uh, just break the news that just now I called him. His mm -hmm. wife is seriously sick Sorry, and okay. he is in the hospital with his wife and mm -hmm. he apologized to the students for mm -hmm. that he could not influence. No, no, no. no. So, so, I, I expect and I'll hope that God will help him and his wife, yeah, he should become with... Uh, yeah. uh, I, I also feel sorry to the Sorry for yes. Yes. Yes, nothing. So we can go for the videos now. 
डॉक्टर रंजन डे डॉक्टर कौशिक सरकार यस डॉक्टर कौशिक सरकार अरविंद अग्रवाल वॉज नॉट सीन एनी एनी टाइम डॉक्टर कल्याण सरकार फॉर हिम इंटेज है ना डॉक्टर कौशिक सरकार एंड डॉक्टर प्रियंका प्रतीक प्रियंकु प्रतीक शर्मा डॉक्टर सरकार प्लीज डॉक्टर सरकार कौशिक Sir, he is joining. He is okay. Joining. Okay. In the meantime, I just want to uh, 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 say something to the students that uh, the case what you they have missed is a, was a obstetric fistula, and uh, this obstetric fistula is in the developing countries like us is the uh, why at one time it was the major cause of the fistula nearly eighty eight percent. now it has come down to 69% and rest of the fistula are uh, iatrogenic fistula and these obstetric fistulas have a um, common cause is prolonged labor so i just like to know who are the students uh, uh, designated for this case if i get yes, in, i just want to discuss a bit on obstetric fistula then uh, i don't want they should not feel cheated uh, for this occasion dr ram yes, kumar dr ram kumar name is dr ram kumar student dr ram kumar, ram kumar uh, yes. are you present here ram kumar yes sir dr ram kumar sir. yes sir uh, dr um, uh, please introduce yourself uh, sir myself dr ram kumar surivansi i am third year resident in apollo hospital bhubaneswar dnb oh. student okay so ram kumar you just tell me in obstetric fistula what is the cause of this uh, fistula what is the cause why such thing happens uh, sin uh, in obstructive fistula sir uh, mostly it is due to ischemia or uh, the uh, during the gravid uterus it is enlarged and uh, it displaces the ureter in a So, uh, problem in connection mm -mm. Oh. no anyway so, it's come up come up come up uh, yes in obstetric fistula gravid uh, gravid uterus does what uh, sir due to the enlargement uh, this displaces ureter and the bladder uh, and there is a, during the surgery or lscs there is no demarc demarcation between the this uh, gravid uterus and bladder so there is more chances of injury during the no, 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 no. this is not fact you know, obstetric fistula is it common following cesarean section or normal delivery uh, it is sir mostly after normal normal de delivery then in to prolonged labor uh, it is Prolong labor. What yes, is the mechanism? Labor. What is the mechanism? Why fistula takes place? Why? Why? Normal delivery uh, sir, takes place uh, in seventy uh, percent cases still in this country. Why? Uh, sir, is, uh, during uh, during prolonged labor, uh, the gravid uterus compresses the bladder uh, with, with the symphysis pubis. <laughs> and due to development of the this ischemic injury there is a, a chances of development is of it, the is it gravid uterus which is compresses or something else <laughs> head of the fetus impacted head of, head head of pelvic disproportion no no this is our basic obstetric knowledge uh, brother you cannot uh, escape this simple yes, yes. question <laughs> anyway so if that be the cause how do you evaluate or what advice normally how do they come to you do they come immediately after the delivery or do they come after some time or they come after three months normally at how do they come uh, sir mostly it is come after two to th three weeks or the, either after removal uh, either in the uh, hospital itself after removal of the catheter or 2 uh, to 3 week after the discharge why do you, do you think in normal delivery all patients are catheterized uh, no sir no all no so it is not the removal of the catheter normally the ischemic change takes some times for the necrosis of the intervening tissue that intervening loss of intervening tissue 
gives rise to this fistula. Normally, what is the site of obstetric fistula? Uh, sir, anterior vaginal, uh, anterior vaginal wall and the uh, bladder neck regions. Anterior vaginal wall and the anterior vaginal wall. Uh, uh, um, it is always the vesicovaginal fistula always in the anterior vaginal wall. How can it be in the posterior vaginal wall? It is always in the anterior vaginal wall, isn't it? Uh, so yes, what is the yes, bladder site? How do you classify the vesicovaginal fistula? Uh, sir, the psychovaginal fistula we classify according to the, uh, uh, this, uh, the um, distal, uh, vagina, distal part of the vagina, uh, fistula's opening. It is in distance between the bladder neck or uh, bladder neck, uh, urethral meters. Uh. I think you are not uh, ready for your examination. Get ready for it. Normally, it is divided in two ways. One is whether it is a supratrigonal fistula or it is an infratrigonal fistula. Second is whether the infratrigonal fistula is associated with urethrovaginal fistula or not or it can be divided into two parts, whether it is a simple fistula or it is a complex fistula. Simple fistula is if it is less than three centimeter, normally we'll call it a simple fistula. If it is more than mm, three mm, centimeter, normally it is a difficult and complex fistula. This is also associated with other involvement of the ureter is present or not. If the ureter is present or if it is a failed fistula, these are the situation called complex fistula. So anyway, time is less. When this patient comes to you, what advice you will give to the patient? What advice you will give to the patient? Uh, sir, if patient is coming early uh, stage, generally we uh, operate this patient at least we wait three to six uh, three, three to six months. So, listen to me. Patient has come to you. I am not asking you to operate. What counseling you will do and what examination you will take? This is the examination uh, question. You are appearing for the examination. So, what counseling you will make? and what examination you will do and what investigation you will advise uh, sir in uh, normally if the fistula is small so uh, in that that cases there is a chances of the spontaneous healing so we counsel the patient ki there may be chances of the healing so we can wait for a few months three to six months Brother, and, uh, you know, let me let me ask you you are not answering the right track how do you know the fistula is small? So what is the uh, examination sir. part? Why is the examination sir. part? You should sir, tell. We do pelvic speculum oh. vaginal examination, sir. Yes. Speculum examination. Do, uh, vaginal examination. How do you do the vaginal examination in a suspected uh, leakage of urine? It can be due to urethrovaginal fistula. It can be vesicovaginal fistula. It can be urethrovaginal fistula. How, how will you examine uh, the patient clinically? Uh, sir, we examine, uh, first is speculum examination. How we uh, examine under, uh, sir, we use vaginal spe speculum in which uh, uh, we displace the posterior vaginal wall and just examine the anterior vaginal wall. And uh, same in, uh, uh, for examining the posterior vaginal wall, we will place the speculum in the anterior vaginal wall. And can you tell me in which position this fistula is examined? I mean, the uh, vagina is examined for leakage. Can you tell me? It's a so famous, name related, famous name related to it. In your clinic, how will you do lithotomy, brother? We have to make the patient with the, the speculum. Which speculum do you use for? Which speculum do you use? Since you have heard the name, since speculum. Okay, have you heard the name? Okay. Yes, and, sir. And what is the position called? Sims position. Sims. What is Sims position? 
look i was not prepared for this uh, topic today but i am asking you these are the question normally asked in the examination so you tell me what is sense position yes sense position <laughs> Sir, uh, Sims position, sir, is the left lateral position. Uh, with? Uh, in which uh, in which a patient lying in the bed in the, with left lateral position, and uh, the both the, uh, at the hip joint there is flexion, and the both knee the joint legs. also is the flexion. Both the legs. Both, both the legs, sir. No, no, no. Both it the legs. Bring the patient at the edge of the table. Keep the lower limb straight. And fold the upper limb as you are telling hip joint flexion and the, the knee joint, and touching the chest at least or the chest of the patient you touch, and then you start the first finger examination and then speculum examination. Speculum. Okay. What is the what is the purpose of keeping this uh, position? So to you relax wait. the perineal muscle. No, it is not so. When you are putting the speculum in the posterior vaginal wall, air enters the vaginal and keeps the area more easily visible to you for better visualization of the entire length of the anterior vagina. Usually, the same speculum is used to show the anterior vaginal wall. Anyway, you have got you have you could not um, see the. Uh, fistula, fistula in the vagina, and but you see that the urine is leaking persistently from the vaginal um, area. The area you could not locate. It is a possibility. Do you agree? Yes, sir. So at this moment, what investigation would you advise, and what counselling you will make? Uh, sir, we can do, uh, do uh, either double dye test, uh, tampon, uh, double dye test, uh, tampon test. I have uh, Vaginal swipe, uh, swipe, uh, response test. You will not do look the upper tract when you are going for the investigation. You will not look for the upper tract, sir. For uh, upper tract, we advise for the uh, contrast city with the delayed, uh, delayed film. So it's a uh, city urograph. You will start. You will start from straight away from uh, city. You won't do any other basic investigations. Sir, we do basic investigation like CBC, RFT, and uh, any YouTube. other investigation. Any other radiological investigation you like to do, uh, which is sir, comparatively do easy to get. Ultrasound and sir, voiding cystoerythrography we can do. Voiding cystoerythrography in leakage. That is the much later examination. So, if you do ultrasound, what are the possibilities of finding can uh, take place? Uh, sir, uh, uh, there may be chances of the upper tract dilatation may so hydronephrosis and uh, in in pelvic region there may be urinoma collection or ascites may be present and uh, ascites may be present. Maybe, sir, due to collection of urine, urinoma. Urinoma. Why do you expect urinoma and VBA? Sir, there may be associated directing injury in that cases. Yes. Yes. So, how will you confirm that? Uh, sir, by CT scan. CT urography by doing CT urography. CT urography, you can confirm that there may be any at all abnormalities in the upper tract of the ureter. Okay, you have done it. Yes. There is nothing. Now, what will you advise to the patient? Sir, uh, two minutes may be allowed, sir. No, yes, yes, you have, we have, you have taken the time of that, uh, this uh, Sanjay Chaudhary. Ah, okay. Sanjay Chaudhary, I am just yes, taking yes. Two, okay. two, five minutes. Okay, you tell me what uh, uh, in the uh, next, what will you advise to the um, patient? Uh, after that, sir, we advise uh, the examination under anesthesia and uh, cystoscopy. No, since CT, what findings you get is very important. 
is very important if the ureters are dilated or ureters are leaking in the retroperitoneum or whatever it may be, the CT findings are very important both in the AP and the lateral view because you'll have to see how the dye is entering into the vagina, isn't it? So the lateral view of the CT is very important. After that, your advice should be, sir, Madam, we have had a in, uh, leakage. We have to assess for that. I have to do a endoscopic assessment. So you will have to do the endoscopic assessment. What are the things you see in endoscopy? I mean, cystoscopy. Sir, in cystoscopy, sir, we see the first urethra uh, in any, there is abnormal connection or not in the, um, in later, if urethra, if uh, fistula is present, the site of the urethra, site of the fistula, location and, and size of the fistula and uh, there is single number of the fistula have ever, associated have with you this ever, Have you ever done cystoscopy in a suspected VA patient? Have you ever done it? What is yes, the sir. problem you get in a uh, in doing cystoscopy in a VBA patient? Sir, bladder is not full. Full. How will you do it? How will you do it uh, then? Sir, uh, sir, we catheterize the patient through per uh, per vagina. Okay, you have pass. heard it. But normally, all it is when I have told you when you cannot see the fistula in speculum examination. The only thing you can do, you can put three mops inside the vagina to make it totally obliterated. Then you can do the cystoscopy. Okay. Then, yes, Achha, then what are the things you see? The location of uh, fistula, numbers of fistula. Uh, in association with this electric orifice and trigonal area. <clears throat> okay. So, and a few more things which I will discuss during my presentation. I don't want to tell you. Uh, after three, you want to advise that after three months you will come. What repair you will do? Obstetric fistula, most commonly, what repair you will do? <clears throat> what is the size of your fistula? <laughs> what is the size of your fistula? That, yes, sir. Obstetric fistulas are usually very uh, edematous, large fistula, not yes. very small all so, the time. So, so, so the capacity, if capacity is okay, you can buy valve it, mobilize the one flap of the bladder, and then we can repair it if needed augmentation. Otherwise, you have to buy valve it that, that a big gap. You cannot cover by the anyway direct or suturing the margin of the fistula. Mm, sir, I have mm, mm, little to contradict at this yes. moment. Obstetric okay. fistulas are best treated vaginally because these are mostly intratrigonal fistula. And at the same time, the due to the postpartum status, delivery of the, you know, the vagina is quite capacious. And these are the advantage because she has already got a mental trauma. Another laparotomy can be avoided if I can achieve it through vagina, if I can achieve it. And that case, it is very important to assess whether the fistula is only the trigonal or it is associated with urethra also. Because in case of the urethra, you will have to think of, along with repairing the urethral fistula, you will have to do something to prevent the stress urinary continence of this patient also. Okay. With this, I sir, conclude and I request uh, Dr. Koshik Shortcut to come up with the... Uh, thank you very much um, for your participation, but I think you should study it in detail and uh, go for the standard uh, gynae obstetric textbook to get the fistula instead of going through the large volume of urology text. Thank you. Thank you, Ranjan Your large, large experience is appears through the vaginal roof. You are expert in vaginal roof, but urologists are usually not conversant with the vaginal roof much as you appear to be very confident. 
and natural uh, fish i mean the sticker fish call you are preparing by the vaginal root i am very surprised okay <clears throat> uh, next one is the dr kaushik sarkar yes sir yes you have the video acha let me introduce dr kaushik sarkar he has either he should introduce himself or i'll have to introduce him koshik you introduce yourself first i am an assistant professor in urology in ramkrishna mission seva pratishthan and wims i also work in the private sector okay i completed my mc sir in 2014 from 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 ipgm here okay ipgm here sir okay 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 please go ahead with the video what uh, are the students sir, how many students are in participating how many students post graduates are participating uh, 39 yes uh, okay please go ahead sir yeah uh, ruma can we start the slides please One second, I'm sharing this. uh i will be speaking on the abdominal repair of the vesico vaginal fistula uh who are the students present here please uh, can someone come on screen sir please call somebody so that kosh kosh can interact with him during his presentation okay okay i'll just as for the participants i am not getting the picture of party i just got it there no oh, sir you name they, them they will come and join okay. now many will okay. but i am not getting their name participants when i put 40 students are here no no sir in the list the in the list there are few students name for today's program so you the three post- students no no the, the pius gupta is there asutosh is there ram kumar is there and priyanku is there priyanku is there priyanku, is there. priyanku you call priyanku Okay, Priyanku. Yeah, yes, sir. Please uh, respond to the questions Priyanku? of Dr. Sarkar. Uh, Priyanku, our interaction today. Can you see me, Priyanku? Yeah, yes, sir. I can see you. Sir. Okay, uh, Priyanka, Priyanku, our interaction will be a bit about the theoretical discuss- discussion regarding the abdominal repair of basic vaginal fistula, followed by a very short, concentrated training video. Sir, abdominal repair of vesico vaginal fistula. Should it be early or should it be delayed, Priyanku? Sir, uh, it should be delayed, sir. Delayed by how much? Sir, uh, it uh, depends on the cause of the fistula, sir. So okay. If it is uh, um, as commonly as a, it's a, if it is an obstetric fistula, then ideally it should be around three to six months. Or okay. if it is or it is uh, if it is caused by some other iatrogenic injury then also it can be 3 to 6 months if it is associated with some malignancy or radiation induced fistula then it is delayed beyond 6 to 12 months sir okay that's good now techniques of trans abdominal repair we will be speaking about open repair today what are the sir. two most common techniques of vvf repair by the open method sir uh, the transvesical method is there and uh, 
transfer cycle what is the more common method uh, some names are there on uh, there are some names priyanku coconal method you are coming yes you are coming up yes coconal method and transfer and what is the transfer cycle uh, method uh, priyanku uh, gilvarnes method sir how do you do it <clears throat> sir uh, we do an anterior uh, cystotomy sir we open the bladder and then we identify the fistula which is there in the posterior wall and then we have to obliterate the fistula tract or excise the fistula tract and thereafter we have to repair both the vaginal opening and the uh, bladder opening and uh, if we use a flap then accordingly we have to we can use we have there are different types of flap abdominal flaps that are available like what flap do you use here uh, sir we can uh, use omental flap sir or uh, peritoneal flap sir is it so or is it a localized bladder flap that can be used for the closure yeah, in yeah, case of like, uh, uh, yes we can use a bladder me bladder mucosal flap as well yes. okay and tell me something about the o'connor method that is the technique that we use most common sir sir the yeah, in o'connor method we do not uh, open the bladder sir i mean we do not bivalve the bladder we can we do a direct uh, posterior approach we identify the fistula and uh, we proceed for excision of the fistula tract and then we go for repair of the fist, uh, fistula opening sir what is the process called uh, of opening the bladder bivalving the bladder bivalving okay is the most important part when you do the abdominal approach during the dissection <clears throat> the most important one point <laughs> which you keep in mind when you go for the abdominal root repair you must dissect the bladder caudal to the fistula You must dissect the bladder when you do the open or go beyond the fistula, caudal to the fistula. Okay, yes. so that you cannot miss the margins. I mean the proper alignment. Yes, go. Yes, please go ahead, sir. Sir. Yeah. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, what <clears throat> incision will you use, Priyanku? <laughs> so we can use a lower midline incision or a uh, fenestel incision okay what advantage does an abdominal repair give over a vaginal repair sir exposure is uh, better in an abdominal repair sir for any kind of surgery exposure is important Ex uh, ideal excision of the fistula tract will be better and sir uh, is the exposure the, the, even adequate even for very low lying fistulas uh, no no sir but the other advantage it, it, it will be it will eliminate the disadvantage associated with a vaginal repair uh, women who will experience shortening of the vaginal wall vaginal cuff um, ex experience uh, sexual problems like dyspareunia those problems can be uh, eliminated using an abdominal repair sir you also cannot do a ureteric reimplantation by the vaginal route can you yes sir i yeah, cannot do because 10% okay. of the other... are associated with uh, ureteric injury also sir what are the other indications to do an abdominal repair exclusively let's suppose you have a uh, a very infratrigonal fistula very close to the bladder neck would you still want to do it abdominally or vaginal no sir no sir that will, that will be ideal will be vaginal sir for supratrigonal fistulas uh, those would be an absolute indication for abdominal approach sir but suppose this the patient with a small uh, vvf very close to the bladder neck and someone who's and the same person who's received radiation therapy would that alter your uh, decision to treat the patient so could you please repeat the suggestion a small capacity bladder 
with the fistula near the blood and neck. Yes, sir. What would you do for this lady? In that case, we can go for a vaginal repair, sir. You can go for a vaginal repair. A small capacity bladder. Try to understand my point, Priyanku. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is hinting towards the augmentation cystoplasty. Yes. Wouldn't you like to augment the bladder, Priyanku? Yes, yes, sir. That will be an option, sir. You would like to augment the do an IU cystoplasty possibly? Yes, sir. Uh, Apollo cystoplasty with a good radiation segment is uh, radiation free segment is there. Good segment of bowel which relatively radiation free. Yes. <clears throat> yes, yes. Go ahead, please. What is a complicated fistula, Priyanku? Sir. Uh... Supratrigonal fistula, sir, involvement of the ureteric uh, ureter or transex, uh, injury to the ureter or presence of a ureter and vaginal fistula. Mm. Large fistula, sir, size more than three, uh, three centimeter. And uh, significant perifistulas, uh, adhesions, and uh, ne necro necrotic areas around the fistula, sir. Dr. Singh, sir, do you, would you yes. agree with Priyanku? No, no, no. See, Priyanku is a half uh, right, half wrong. I mean, maximum point is right, but a few point is say, you a can complicated fistula is one which is more than five centimeters. Yes, sir. Just someone has was telling three centimeter before the, you started your talk, but uh, that centimeter is a more than three centimeters should be taken as a. All complicated. failed fistulas are complicated fistulas, sir, isn't it? Yes, and if it is combined with any other or a fistula with a interconnection, two VVF with interconnections and UVF along with that, retrovaginal fistula. So these are the all combinations that may yes. make it com complex fistulas. <clears throat> now, handling of the fistula strap. There are two schools of thought, Priyanku, regarding excision of the fistula strap and no excision of the fistula strap. What, what do you have to say regarding this? Do you excise the whenever you treat the fistula, do you excise it or you leave it and repair it only just refreshing the margin? Sir, uh, the advantage of uh... You have to separate, separate the bladder from the vaginal tract. And do you uh, excise the margin? If the vagina is small, you try to compromise something. Otherwise, you, it is better to excise and then repair it. Yes. Healing will be better. Judicious excision. Advantage of exercise uh, will be getting a healthy area for reapproximation. Yes. And, so. and no oxygen will get a better vaginal capacity. capacity. So that is only two things. If yes. we do not exercise, we have some fibrous tissue which lends some weight to the repair. That is that school of thought. Okay, sir. Now, uh, Priyanku, uh, how would you close the vagina? In a case of vesicovaginal fistula, sir, we uh, close it in double double layer, sir, and then we prefer an interpositional flap. Uh, and uh, then... is it a continuous suture or an interrupted suture, sir? It it, it is interrupted Continu suture. Interrupted. Sir. What is the Justification for giving an interrupted suture, Priyanku? Sir, uh, interrupted suture has lesser chance of uh, for further necrosis, sir. In case of continuous suture, there is chance of inducing necrosis at, at, at already fistulas or pathological sites. Sir. Now, why is there an increased chance of necrosis in a VVF repair? 
So compromise to the vascular supply, sir. Uh, it is always uh, less chance of compromising in case of interrupted. Actually, cell. Priyanku, if you see, quite a few of the fistulas that we treat, they are post hysterectomy fistulas. Agree? Sir. Yes. So they are post menopausal. Agree? Yes. So these vaginas, usually they have a poor blood supply, which is why I would not like to jeopardize these blood supplies with a continuous suture. You can give yes. an interrupted suture for the post obstetric fistulas, they would have a good blood supply, but postmenopausal hysterectomies, people who, ladies who already have, have had a laparoscopic or an open hysterectomy with a salpingo oophorectomy, they are essentially postmenopausal. So, Due to the postmenopausal state, there was the quality of the tissue. There is problem in connection. They are not as good, which is given interrupted. But I just said. Sir, can you hear me, sir? Dr. Singh, sir? Yes, no, no, there was some difficulty in listening to you because there was an interruption okay. in the voice. Yes. Now so it, what do you say? Now it is all right. Yeah, now it's okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes, please go now ahead. Regarding the, regarding the role of interpositional flaps, Priyanku, what are the flaps that are commonly used in VVF repair transabdominal? In transabdominal, sir, peritoneal flap, omental flap, and then uh, rectus abdominis flap, gracilis, uh, bladder mucosal flap, and uh, intestinal submucosal flap can be used, sir. Okay. So, what are the omental, uh, how is, what is the vascularity of the omentum derived from? So, it is, uh, there are branches uh, from the superior mesenteric. Superior mesenteric. Arcade, arcade branches sir, are there sir, in the omen, sir. So, gastric. Could you no, be a bit more specific, Priyanko? Yes. We detach the graft from the uh, omentum from the um, transverse colon and right. then get the length as you like it and pass through the side of the colon and then fix it to the place. Most of the time it does, your job is done. He's asking for the vessel which come originating. Which in, vessel would you like vessel, to form your momentum flap on Priyank? You identify the vessel. This was the method I described. You identify the vessel from where it is coming out and the branches is asking. Yes. Priyanku, you've heard of the right gastroepiploic yes, artery? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You heard of the left gastroepiploic artery? Right, left. Yes, sir. Okay. And you also heard of the splenic and the gastroduodenal arteries. Yes, they yes. all give supply to the greater omen. Usually, it is the right gastroepiploic artery or the right part of the omentum, which is easier to mobilize down into the pelvis and it gives a better blood supply. Okay. Yes, sir. Now tell me something about the complications of VVF repair, Priyam. Sir, uh, complication of VVF repair uh, as a soon, uh, it can be early or late, sir. Early complications like uh, leakage, giving away of the anastomosis, uh, giving away of the repair, sir. And uh, further leakage, uh, recurrence of the leakage uh, per vagina, uh, infection, bleeding, hematuria. So these are early complications, sir. What would be the late complications? Late complications, sir. Recurrence of the fistula, sir, due to improper healing. Sir, then shortening, uh, uh, if they, we have used a transvaginal route, then shortening of the vaginal length that can lead to complications uh, like dyspareunia. Okay. 
now following a vvf prepare uh, uh, what is your choice would you put in one catheter or two catheters so ideally we should... so uh, pyrethral and suprapubic catheter uh, uh, have you heard of urinary diversion due to a in a patient with vesico vaginal fistula have you seen any case I've heard of sir, yes, but not seen. Where is it done, Priyanku? And when, 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 what are the causes of a vesicovaginal, a malignant vesicovaginal fissure? Like, tell me. Sir, uh, in, in cases where the ureter is involved and significant length of ureter we don't get a significant length of ureter for reimplantation, sir. Then there, then we should go for urinary diversion procedure, sir. Uh, that is not correct, Priyanku. We do a urinary diversion in vesicovaginal fistula. Number one, when there has been multiple failed attempts. Number one. Okay. Sir. Okay. Number yes. two is if the vesicovaginal fistula is of malignant origin. Sir, yes. Sir. What do you mean by malignant origin? What are the malignancies that can cause a malignant BPF? Sir, uh, um, malignancies cancer of the cervix, vulva, or endometrial carcinoma. Endometrial carcinoma, sir. Yes. Yes. So, how does this fistula form? Sir, it can be either as a direct. Uh, result from the malignant process pathology or uh, following treatment for mal uh, malignancy like radiation, sir. Which can does it? Okay. In which stage of carcinoma cervix do you see uh, vesicovaginal fistula? So locally advanced cases can... Stage 3B and 4, post-radiation. post -radiation. Okay. Now we will yes. come to the video of uh, abdominal repair of vesicovaginal fistula. Ruma, can we have the video, please? Ruma, please start the video of Dr. Sharkar. I already started. But it is not in the, on the screen. We can so see the video, Ruma. One second. <sighs> can you see this? Yes. 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 Uh, actually, but, I I will not. Uh, Ruma, please go to two minutes and eighteen seconds. Yeah, that's that. Thank you. This is the video showing the O'Connor's approach where we place two strong silk sutures on the either side of the proposed midline cystotomy. We can see the stay sutures. And this is the midline cystotomy that we are doing. We open the bladder in the midline. And we apply silk sutures on the edges of the cystotomy incision as we go down. This performs two functions. It gives us a better hold on the bladder and, and it is also hemostatic.
Now, we incise the posterior bladder wall in the sagittal plane to the level of the vagina. We can see the catheter coming out. We pull out the Foley's catheter and use it as an anterior bladder wall retractor. That also improves our exposure of the field. Now, you can see that as we are going down, we are applying more and more stay sutures. We inject 5 cc of water in the edges of the fistula. And separate the lateral wall of the bladder by sharp scissor dissection. We hold and pull the edge of the vaginal wall. You can see the vaginal wall is held with the back of forceps. You can see the gorge from the vaginal wall coming out. Gorge placed in the vaginal wall. Dissection of the right bladder vaginal wall. Slowly the vagina is getting exposed. Now you can very well see the vagina and the bladder together. We are dissecting the posterior bladder wall away from the anterior vaginal wall by sharp dissection. Dissect the vaginal wall on all the sides. Then close the vagina by continuous number one vital sutures. Now we start the bladder closure by applying an angle stitch in the posterior bladder wall. Priyanku, you can appreciate the importance of what Dr. Singh said some time back regarding the need to extend dissect the vaginal wall much beyond the fistula. See, the, the vagina has been closed very beautifully because it's being extensively dissected beyond the bladder. And now yes. we are closing the bladder wall. Yes, sir. Ruma, to fast forward, please. A portion of the Life portion to chole our own bus. We take less of mucosa and more of detrusor muscle to obtain a good single lead closure.
Dr. Sarkar, you are approaching the time of Ranjan Day. <coughs> okay. You might to pass over to the This is the closure of the bladder. We reposition the urethral catheter balloon back in the bladder. Okay, stop. Uh, Ruma, bondo kore da. Please stop it. Okay. With that, sir, I think I would conclude my uh, talk on uh, open transabdominal repair of the VBF, sir. No, very good presentation and teaching. Confident teacher and confident student. I think this uh, Anant Harikatha Ananta, we can go on and on on this discussion. But let us proceed further. Any other question in the chat box that uh, requires Dr. Sarkar to be uh, answer? Any chat? Sir, please repeat. What is the purpose of examining the patient in Sims position? Dr. Sarkar. In Sims position, we would have an idea of the vaginal the quality of the vaginal tissues, the position of the uh, fistula. Yes. At the same time, it is convenient for the female patient to expose, uh, lie down in the lateral position, and it helps to visualize the anterior wall of the vagina more extensively than in the lithotomy position, unless we use some traction on the body. So without putting any traction on the vault, if you may try to see since position is the better <laughs> position for the entire examination of the um, anterior Good. True. The clinically is a good thing, but when vaginoscopy has come, this since position appears to be a little more, less used than it was. The vaginoscopy <laughs> is an is a examination that is done in the OT. But the clinical no, no. examination, we have to do the all the stetho, the, your ultrasound has become the stetho now in your clinic. And uh, this vaginoscopy has become the part of examination in the clinic. Now, those who are practicing it. Okay. So, Dr. Ranjan, thank you, Dr. Sarkar. Dr. Ranjan Day, please. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Rima, please start with the presentation quickly. Yes, Asutosh. Dr. Asutosh. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, the Dr. Ranjan Day. <clears throat> Next slide, please. Sir, I have started a topic which is not very commonly practiced by the urologist. That is the repair of the vaginal fistula by the vaginal root. Why I have chosen this topic? The topic of discussion today, just because there is no single gold standard technique of repair of VVF. VVF can be repaired both abdominally and also from vaginally. And if you see the results, the results are almost comparable. So in that case, I will just present myself that how this has evolved and how it is important to practice to repair a very distressing situation in a woman who is suffering for a very disastrous complications either due to delivery or due to some operation especially in a country where the religion and the taboos and the social norms has become so prominent to make them isolated in the society, as stated by our um, today's moderator, that the husband leaves um, their wife because she is suffering from uh, VVF. So there lies the importance of the VVF in repair should be so perfect and so good results should be given to the um, patient that they can be re 
considered once again as a part of the society. This uh, vaginal repair, do you think is a new concept? Who is the student? Yes, sir. Uh, I am, sir. Dr. Chaudhary. Dr. Chaudhary. Do you think it's a new concept? No, sir. Previously, it has been done, sir. It has been done since ages. So, Even vaginal, vaginal repair of the... Um, uh, 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 vaginal repair of the physical vaginal fistula was started initially by Saint himself. The first... Yes, sir. Uh, first, first reported case of the vaginal repair was done by Sims himself, Jan Sims. He started it. Why he has started this? Because that I will tell you why he has started this and why it should be practiced in day-to-day -day urological practice when we repair the vesicular vaginal fistula. During presentation, I am not proponent or opponent for any of the methods. I just want to highlight that this is a very safe method which can be repeatedly used without causing much psychological and the physical trauma to the patient. Then you tell me, are the principles of repair different in vesicular vaginal fistula done vaginally and if it is done abdominally either by laparoscopy or by robotics or by open surgery is the principles are different no sir the principle are same sir it should be a the, 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 so so we will discuss what are the principles of the repair of the physical visual fistula and sir is the is this a new strategy for the urologist no it is not a new strategy for the urologist just now our uh, moderator said he has seen it to Dr. Ganesh who was doing this surgery. I have seen it, Ganesh doing it, this surgery in the year 1996 is one of the conference in Kochi. So it is not before Ganesh, many, many years, the urologist and the gynecologist are practicing this uh, procedure, which is a very standard procedure with a near comparable um, uh, result in repair next slide please then what are the what are the indications of vaginal repair if you take my opinion all all fistulae are indications for vaginal repair excepting i can say only what are the contraindications of the um, vaginal repair one is multiple or complex fistula, very close to the ureteric orifice, multiple failed repair, and the tight or stenotic vagina. Accepting these four conditions where it is difficult to deal the fistula vaginally because of the stenotic vagina, we cannot pull it down or it has been failed multiple times or the tissues are not very healthy in the vaginal area we can do almost all the fistulas repair vaginally without causing any trauma to the intra-abdominal organ. Next slide, please. So what is the advantage about the transabdominal? Uh, uh, what is the advantage about the transabdominal repair? It is less invasive. So the quick recovery, shorter hospital stay, it is most cosmetic. Nobody can see the area of repair. Does not require any specialized instruments. Least expensive and similar success rate. In a country like us, where the expenditure is the major issue on the health, and the health issue is so important for the society, this advantage should be taken into great consideration. Next slide, please. So, how do we how do we prepare a patient for um, uh, uh, VVA evaluation? This I have discussed during my discussion of, of the short case, but still I want to uh, repeat it that the clinical import examination is very important. What of the things to be noted, the things to be noted, what is the condition of the vagina, 
whether the fistula can be felt easily in the finger, whether the condition, whether there is any prolapse associated with it. And at the same time, at the same time, patient has excoriation, fungal infection in the genitalia, that should be taken into consideration because they are the thing should be treated before we take the patient for surgery. The vaginal mucosa is another important factor, which is also important if it is pale and thin, preoperative estrogenization is very, very important for preparing the patient. And third thing we like to know about the vagina, whether the vagina can insert three fingers. In all practical purpose, if a vagina accommodates three fingers comfortably, this patient can be taken for fistula repair, whatever be the area of fistula in the tract. Second is definitely urine culture. We must try to treat the infection before we take it for consideration. Even at times, some institutes offer two weeks of antibiotic therapy before that. And contrast study, as I have already stated, that contrast study is essential to assess the upper tract, whether the fistula is associated with it. At the beginning, I have said that the incidence of the fistula, the etiology of the fistula is gradually changing from the obstetric fistula to the iatrogenic fistula. The number <laughs> is getting high on the iatrogenic fistula than before. So this, keeping this in mind, the ureteric injury should be taken into consideration, which is comparatively less in the obstetric fistula. And the last and the most important evaluation should be done in the cystoscopy under anesthesia, if possible, to do a bimanual examination to see the condition of the fistula, what is the thickness of the fistula that can be done keeping one finger in the vagina and the cystoscope in the bladder to assess the thickness of the tract. And cystoscopy, along with cystoscopy, we also can see, we also can do the vaginal examination by vaginoscopy. Next slide. Then what is the technique of repair? Regarding the technique of repair, I have to say two things. One is that position of the patient. Patient can be operated in the vaginal root, either in the supine, Tendlenburg position, or in the prone reverse tender and back position. If you ask me which is the best method, which is the best uh, approach to repair uh, a fistula, I would say, and it is also documented. Next slide, please. Next slide, Suma. Uh, next, uh, in the prone position. I will come with the picture and the demonstration of the two techniques in the later on. So the principle of the repair is the good visualization of the um, good visualization and proper positioning, what I have mentioned. Why prone position is better? Because it is easy to see the site of the fistula. And tension-free approximation. Tension-free approximation is the key, key factor for getting a good result. Tension-free approximation, if you cannot do, then it is bound to fail. Third is the multi-layer closure. Fourth is the vascular interposition. And the fifth was continuous drainage. This observation was made, not today. This observation was made in the year 1953 by the Cuvelier. Kuvelier in 1953 made this observation to get a good uh, result of the vaginal repair. And James Smith used the repair of the vaginal, uh, this thing, with silver um, threads, not with catgut or silk. She, he used silver thread and with proper um, vaginal uh, drainage, they got very good result. Next slide, please. What are the types of um, vaginal repairs? It has been discussed already, but I like to mention that the large score technique, which is very commonly used nowadays, and especially the modified large technique, that is most commonly placed. 
Second is the Raj's technique and third is the Webster technique that all has been discussed by my previous presenter. But still, uh, the things are mentioned. I don't want to waste time. These are the three um, methods commonly play, uh, used for the vaginal repair. Next slide, please. This is the position I was talking about. This I have learned from, I have seen first time in the year 1996 when Professor Ganesh did it in the Calcutta National Medical College with a fantastic result with all the um, uh, repaired vagina. This is a reverse uh, um, position, prone position where the knees are kept in 90 degree and there is a bolster which is placed below the perineum so that it is high up from the surface and the head of the patient is tilted a bit so that patient uh, surgeon sitting in between the thighs can see the fistulous tract directly under his vision, direct vision of the fistula, not looking high up and look for the fistula is necessary. So this is the best position to do a good vaginal repair if we want to do a vaginal repair. Other um, uh, position which is important is the tendon and bulk repair, which I will show in the repair phase in a small video. Next slide, please. So advantage of the prone position is the surgical site is more accessible in case of the supratrigonal fistula and no more ergonomic position for dissecting and suturing. Alternate position is lithotomy. So I am telling you all fistulae starting from the vault to the um, erythrovaginal fistula, all this fistula can be repaired only vaginally. No robot can do it from abdomen, the entire range of the fistulae, except in the contraindication I have mentioned. Next slide, please. What are the operative steps? This is very important. <laughs> A Foley's catheter is inserted through the fistulous opening, as I have stated previously. A five milliliter of air is injected and fixed into the bladder. And by gentle traction of the catheter, we can bring down any fistula close to the introitus if the fistula, the vagina is pliable and it accommodates three fingers for uh, insertion. And Next thing is to in inject one in two million, one in two lakhs dilution of uh, adrenaline with normal saline allow, around the fistula tract to get a well by which the dissection makes very easy. I have already discussed what are the simple fistula, what are the complex fistula in the previous discussion. I am not going into that. The proper dissection of the vagina from the bladder keeping uh, at least one centimeter of gap around the fistula is very, very necessary for a better closure, tension-free closure of the urinary bladder. Next, next slide. This is a video. Shuma, please, uh, Ruma, please show the video, uh, play the video. You can see that we have inserted the um, uh, thing with we have done a vaginoscopy and we have universalized the tract like this. The dilatation of the tract is done to accommodate. Uh, this is done uh, in a superimposition, uh, lithotomy position. And this is how we demonstrate. You can see how we have demonstrated it is, we have brought down the uh, fistula uh, area uh, this now we have injected and dissecting the nicely circumferentially. We here I want to mention that in vaginal resection we normally keep uh, uh, fistula tract undisturbed. That helps in the less spasm and make keeps the fistula small. In abdominal resection, normally we cut the fistula, we make the fistula tract much larger. Then we repair the uh, fistula in two layers using 2-0 uh, Vicryl. Ruma, you can first forward it a bit. This is how we, we gradually, by first layer, 
by interrupted suture, we close the fistula strap. Ruma, to fast forward, Padu. You can see that uh, we have okay. Uh, uh, we have closed the um, first layer. Now we are taking the second layer to um, close the fistula gradually. Go a little uh, ahead and we take it out and we tie all the suture. Then we repair the fistula in the second layer. You see, it is almost the closure of the fistula strap in two layers. Now comes the interposition graft. Interposition of the vascular tissue in very small fistula may not be necessary, but as I have said, if it is three centimeter or more, it is mandatory to give. Uh, is it over, uh, Ruma? Is it over, Ruma? Yes, sir. Yeah, so go back to the next slide. Next slide, please. Yeah. It is mandatory to give intervening flaps. The flaps which has already been discussed, that is the Martius flap. This is the picture of the Martius flap. The, the uh, labial fat pad is supplied by the three arteries. We have to make an incision at the junction of the labia majora and labia minora longitudinally and dissect out the thick pad of fat, keeping at least one, keeping at least one pedicle to the fat intact so that it can be get its blood supply. Advantage is that if this is done with one side, if it is not adequate to cover the entire repaired area, we can take on both the sides. It gives a very robust blood supply. Advantage is that there is no deformity in 99% of the cases, even the both the um, labial fats are taken. Next, next slide. Next slide is the gracilis graph. What is gracilis? Why gracilis muscle is chosen? Any of the student can any of you can say why gracilis muscle is chosen and what is gracilis muscle? Any of the student, please. No sound. Good. So the thing to be said, it is a muscle which is in the adductor group. It's a flat muscle which is originated from the pubic ramus to insert it in the medial aspect of the tibia. And it has got three blood supply. It has got three blood supply. And this muscle is mostly used for the adduction and the flexion of the knee. The advantage of using this muscle is that if we sacrifice this, there is hardly any interruption in the function of the knee or the hip in their performance. So this muscle is kept Keeping the blood supply, you can see the last uh, last blood supply is taken and it can be inverted very closely in the um, vagina through the vaginal tunnel and it can go almost up to the vault of the urinary bladder, giving a very robust blood supply to the area of repeat. Next slide, please. The tips for the success, proper case selection, appropriate timing of surgery, <laughs> tissue interposition, and proper training. Thank you. Next slide. Thank you very much. Yes, Dr. Ranjan, one question from my side. During this vaginal repair, do you yeah. have any occasion to do electric catheterization and post-op cystoscopy after repair? I am telling you, that it is a standard procedure to do bilateral urinary catheterization when cystoscopy is being done. And at the same time, incorporation of the tract with 
another ureteri catheter which is replaced by police catheter for traction for prevention and the another important thing if the uh, um, fistula track is within 1 cm of the ureteri orifice it is always better to put a double j stent at the either at the beginning or at the end of the cell thank you any question from the student any question from the students very good ashutosh yes sir any question from your side this is very good naya avatar is a new incarnation of the uh, this uh, vaginal approach very good they are prepared very well yes dr harpreet waiting for dr harpreet good evening good evening ranveer sir i was yes good evening good evening watching in between because i was in ahmedabad so i was connecting. okay okay so <laughs> it's a great thank you yes Thank you. Dr. Ranjan has really presented very brilliantly. I also no, no, all Sarkar has also done. So all have done very good. Good preparation of the teachers. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, so coming to my topic, which will be a uh, um, other than VVF, less complicated than what uh, my previous speakers has shown it. So coming to sir, I will be presenting mainly TOT because oh, yes. I didn't get the TVT videos. It's very difficult. Pius Gupta, get... come on, Pius. Can you see my screen? Yes, I can. Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Complete. So, so can I start, sir, uh, Ranveer, sir? Yes, yes, please. Go ahead. Okay. Your student so, is Asutosh Gupta. Okay. So, so Asutosh, you. what I'm trying to do is basically, I'm just because. See, I was, uh, as per the program, I was thinking this is the last thing. I will just give a little brief about SUI also in the process. I have more of the pictures to show that in the video. So I'll, I'll just begin. So it's the most common SUI, stress urinary incontinence is the most common form of urinary incontinence in, in women. It's always mainly is underdiagnosed, underreported, and prevalence increases with age. And is it 50 percent though we have written is prevalence but it's more than 50 percent and there's a lot of social and functional impact psychological if we see the annual cost of treating urinary incontinence is about 12.4 billion in 90 this is the u.s data and there are functional anatomical pathologies pathophysiology can be multifactorial and you really whatever you do in medical science history examination never leaves you and you have to understand the physiology of LUT also from the basis of the treatment. So if you are um, Ashutosh, as we go along, you know, you should know a little bit of that uh, anatomy of micturation is the muscle. We have two sphincters, normal capacity is about 300 to 600. You all know the urge to why this is just to recap 150 to 300 CC. We have a CNS controlled by the pawns, which facilitate and cerebral cortex where you actually decide where to wear, where not to wear. And of course, hormones do play a role. So we see peripheral nerves, this spinal cord, if you see the parasympathetic comes for T11 to L2 and sympathetic come from S, uh, S2, S3, S4. You can see one is going in the bladder and other is going to the pelvic floor muscles. You can see the here and uh, to physiology. So parasympathetic means you have to promote voiding. Sympathetic has to relax at, them, at that time and Somatic nerves, the pudendal nerve, where you decide where to control, where, where to word, and where not to word. And you see the distributions of the uh, um, uh, adrenergic receptors. This is all the beta, and this is the alpha in the neck. So this is just to give you a brief. So how you define is actually involuntary escape of urine. And when you, whenever you're taking the history, what you will take in the history, Asutosh? What you will look for the history? Asutosh? Dr. Ashutosh. Is sir, am I, audible? am I audible, yeah, sir? Yeah, Ashutosh, go ahead. Sir, am I audible? Yes, Ashutosh. Please tell me how to how to take the history as you are. Sir, in case of a patient presenting with urinary incontinence, I would like to know what is the amount of leak that occurs. 
and yes. on what activity it occur whether it occur with coughing sneezing apart from i mean i want to take the history regarding urine leak in in association with change of posture in association with physical activity in association with some strenuous activity like coughing or sneezing and apart from that whether whether they have some associated symptoms sir correct so three pieces very easy for examination position of leakage supine sitting standing protection if you if a patient come coming from a very good family in fact now the normal people also buy a pads they are winning that this uh, uh, diapers all the time so you can ask how many diapers and does is affecting his quality of life bladder diary is very important another thing you can go this way you can ask them to make a measuring pot measure the uh, uh, measure the cup and the glass from where they drink by by putting water in the measuring uh, urine measuring pot and then keep a warning diary so you can know what is actually because we see a lot of mix in content so very important this will really help you decide whether it's urgency or the spes so risk factor as you know uh, women more age with aging we do the muscle ma mass and see incontinence is never normal except during infancy obesity smoking and other neurological diseases so we have this four five types just to sum it up fast because we already long session are stress mixed overflow functional so this is very important so what types of uh, ashutosh i want to know what type of uh, suis are you do you know ashutosh genuine stress unit in contents how many types SUI can SUI can occur. SUI can occur in urgency, urgent continence, sir. No. Apart from that, uh, sir, anybody, sir? anybody from the postgraduate students want how many types of mm -hmm. SUI you know? Uh huh. Little loud. I'm not able to hear. One admi sir. So, Ashutosh, you are talking about urgency. Uh -huh. See, two types: urethra hypermobility, eighty-five percent, bladder neck, urethra. Meeting me. After ten minutes, I'm going to talk about the child birth. I'm going to talk about the child birth. And second is the pelvic splinter itself. It is in fifteen percent due to pelvic incontinence surgery, pelvic radiation, trauma, neurogenic. There are two deficiencies. So these are the two main types. and when we talk of uh, and if we go by the definition uh, it's involuntary leakage on effort or exertion or on sneezing or coughing so you can demonstrate the leakage of the uh, urine uh, from the urethra and urodynamics you can see involuntary leakage of urine during uh, uh, urodynamics with increased abdominal pressure in the absence of ductal contraction so if you want to go by sui definitions these are the definitions and uh, treatment options you can try conservative where the fluid management uh, you can avoid caffeine uh, beer tea whichever can increase you uh, uh, you can use diuretics uh, in the morning and uh, you can make the facilitate the patient uh, toilet should not be very far because they will not able to hold that much and then lose weight toilet these are the conservative me measures you have to see you have to treat like constipation smoking all the kegels exercise so level 1 evidence in kegel exercise they say 3 to 5 second squeeze 10 to 20 contraction 3 to 5 into per day so this much should be it have to be you have to contract they have to hold it and then you have to release it you have to actually teach them actually in fact many people many places if you remember velor well also had this they have the bio feedback mechanism where they squeeze whether actually you can see with the whether they are squeezing properly or not. they have to actually treat other way they will use the wrong muscles then there are drugs like uh, uh, duloxetine alpha adrenergics but since my topic is surgery i will come to the pharmacotherapy if you have the associated stress so what i want to say that before you jump to the surgery in sui very important that you exhaust all your medical behavior pharmacological and exercise treatment because surgeries are uh, irreversible and you made sure that everything has failed that gives patient also confidence tomorrow if there's a complication patient will accept it so coming to mid urethral sphincter see i had mentioned that it it comes down this whole things come down and this vesico urethral angle also changes 
So this is the area which comes down. So where they come the concept of tape where you can pass a tape or string and you can see this is a, a, a supra pubic is a, supra pubic is actually uh, this TVT that is a blind and it goes to the retroperitoneum. It is I was discussing with people uh, here also in the conference. Uh, so they're telling that TVT is very rarely done, not available, and after TO2, mostly as people have shipped. And if they're using, they're using synthetic, not synthetic, but the um, this uh, bi biological. They're taking rectus sheath mesh and all they're using. It. So, uh, so if you see the mid things, that daycare surgery, 10 to 20 minute procedure, you can do in sedation, regional anesthesia, you can require one to two weeks off work. If you see complications are rare, bleeding, infection, warding dysfunction, mesh erosion, de, de novo, worsening of previously uh, urinary incontinence. TBT can have bladder, bowel, and vessel injury, whereas TOT, vaginal perforation, leg groin pain, we have seen even UTI, we have seen in one or two patients. And cure is very good, whatever you do it. So I'll just give you one case. She's a 37 year old lady, married with two children, last child 12 years. She has dilated cardiomyopathy, hypertension, non-diabetic with regular periods. She has presented with alerts, frequency, leakage of urine, coughing, sneezing, laughing, even with empty bladder. Flow normal, no urgency or incontinence. So uh, on examination, paragon soft. Um, uh, Ashutosh. Yes, sir. Uh, how you examine the patient of stress urinary incontinence? How you decide? Uh, how is that examination? How you decide that this patient need what surgery or this patient needs surgery or not? How you decide? Sir, we look for look for the amount of incontinence. Sir, we ask the patient to stand and then cough, and then we see what 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 amount of urine is leaking. We can also examine them in supine position and see the obvious if there is obvious leak from vagina with even slightest of coughing. Then most and we have exhausted all the. Uh, I, I mean, conservative treatment like medication and Kegels and all, and that has not worked, still see leaking, then we can consider, consider these cases for surgical repair, sir. Uh, so, Asutosh, the very important thing which I follow in my practice, that when we say, senior people are there, I can correct me. Always, when you examine the patient in full bladder, then wait for some time, tell him to go and pass urine and examine in the empty bladder. The patient with the uh, SUI, genuine with the severe variety, will also leak when you examine in the empty bladder. And then what is bonus test? Sir, in bonus test, sir, we look for urethral, urethral angle, sir. We put a, put a, I mean, a majestic like material in the urethra and we look for deviation of on cutting. Sir. If it is more no, than no, 30 no, degrees. No, 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 no. Bonus test is to put a finger and then yes. ask patient to cup. If there is no leak, then be sure that your surgery is going to work. So it's a very, very important test because see, uh -huh. after tapes, people started uh -huh. doing uh -huh. what are left uh -huh. in and out uh -huh. surgery. Uh -huh. and then, there's a lot of background noise. Uh -huh. So patients started doing uh -huh. this, uh -huh. they started doing left and right tapes. And there are a lot of complications. We have seen patient went into retention, patient is not passing urine, patient has to put the CIC, and even the erosions also. So very important, you should choose the patient very correctly. If you see 100 patients, maybe you get only 10 to 15 patients who are actually need tape. So we'll be very, very sure. I wanted to be very, very careful about this. I wanted to stress this point because doing TOT is nothing. Anybody can do it. But choosing the right patient in the right way which the patient can avoid after surgery is the most important criteria. So if you see the flow and everything is normal. So we have done all these things. She has come, Bolani, So we didn't listen. We tell you go for one month with therapy and then you report to us, then we will see. So I will always tell whatever patients, see, whatever, how many people here see, do a medical treatment yourself. You don't know what has been given to her. People say a lot of things, whether she has eaten the drugs or not, whether or not. maybe she is not able to uh, tolerate duloxetine. We have seen a lot of patients have uh, sleep, uh, sleep fatigue, and they are uh, in a different stance. So you must find out what they have given and try a medical therapy. And uh, uh, so uh, this video is not working. Uh, let me see. So, no, okay. so let me, you know, coming to, this is a lithotomy position. This is normal lithotomy position. And I do scopy in all my patients. Here that I have not shown you a scopy. 
and uh, see generally when the uh, the procedure has been described by dolrens he has used system french police catheter i always use uh, 22 french three vas police catheter so this is my way of doing it but and the surface marking are very important you draw two vertical lines in the groin you can see these two vertical lines and then the level of the clitoris you draw a horizontal line where they meet in the both the groins they are the areas of your passing needle because they are just where you can perforate the obturator membrane so this is very easy you have to remember this marking do mark it even you have done 100 times but do it very properly and then you develop a anterior vaginal space how you develop leave about a 3 3 mm of the part of the splinter go little uh, more proximal and then give a incision so you don't damage the splinter and then you uh, you see that i'm trying to reduce the paraurethral space on both side and your scissors should be pointed towards the uh, 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 ischemic pubic not the way that scissor is shown here don't go this way it should be on the both the sides it, it's very important and these are the needles. These are the two needles for your, if you're going for the left hand, then you have to have your needle on the right hand and you have to use this way. Your, your uh, left hand is into the vagina to guide the, guide the curve of this needle. And uh, here the needle is delivered. You can see an eye of the needle and then the mesh is being attached. This mesh is different than the mesh which you use for hernia. Don't use this mesh. This, this mesh is more fine. So use the proper mesh and the, the same thing is uh, uh, repeated on the other side. What is important is the tightening of the mesh. So they say there should be three to four mm space. So I use Mesenberg scissors. You can somebody use four mm dilator also. So Mesenberg scissor is good. Make it tight, but over the Mesenberg scissor. So this will prevent your patient to go into retention. This will prevent over tightening. This will prevent, uh, prevent your mesh erosion. And at the same time, one very important point when you're doing this, see the mesh is absolutely flat. It is not crumpled. Sometimes it gets crumpled. And then you just remove the uh, scissor wherever it is and leave the mesh there. You repair the anterior vaginal wall. Pack, pack, pack it for a pack it for a one day. I keep police catheter for 24 hours. I pack it for a day and remove the pack very next day. And I discharge the patient. I tell them to not to lift heavy things for three to four weeks and no sexual intercourse uh, for 12 weeks and uh, no squatting. They can use a Western toilet. And this is, I'm checking this patient after two months follow-up. In fact, many people can check uh, even just after the surgery, you can ask bladder to cough. Sometimes they are not able to do in the spinal anesthesia, but most of the time they're able to do it. You can do again a cystoscopy. That's your choice. Generally, you don't need, you need, post uh, post procedure uh, cystoscopy must in the TVT, but not in the TOT. So as soon as a common problem, conservative treatment must be tried and the, the uh, slings are the uh, daycare surgery, quick recovery, but I use spinal, so I keep one day. And um, thank you for patient listening. I'm stopping my share. Thank you, <clears throat> thank you Arpreet. Any question from Arpreet? The students, any question from your teacher? Piyush, any question? Sir, in which case we directly go for surgery? So, if a, if a genuine stress urinary incontinence and you see nothing conservative treatment has failed and you, when, you, when you examine the patient in the full bladder, supine, and you see that the patient still leaks urine, and also, when you do a bony test and you see there is a good amount of, uh, 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 when you lift it and you see that the patient is absolutely continent, you can straight away go with the surgery. But you have to have evaluate the, the patient properly and also tell them that there is a chance that patient might go into retention. So you have to counsel them about that they might need a CIC for some time. You never know. And uh, other thing is that, uh, Ah, this is what you have asked. So this is the way you do a counseling. Can I can I add a small thing, Harpreet? Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. But most <laughs> actually, a SIU surgery depends. Actually, recommendation depends on the degree of the SIU. Uh, whether it is a mild SIU, moderate, or severe. If it is moderate and severe, I think you can go for straight away surgery. 
in this condition the profession of the patient is a very important if the ear stress comes with a uh, grade one incontinence or a um, professional who has a very demanding job if she comes with a uh, grade one incontinence that kind of professional need at times also dictate us to do the stress urinary incontinence repair because it will hamper her performance otherwise grade two and the grade three these are the two stages where we can consider the initial grade three we have to go for straight away um, incontinence surgery and also correction of cystocin if it is present if it is not so we have to do the surgery straight away moderate grade two you can give some medical trial legal exercise if it does not improve within three months we'll have to go for surgery thank you uh, ranjan sir very important point you made and i'm happy that you uh, you came out this point so i was expecting some questions about urodynamics none of you asked whether urodynamics is necessary or mandatory because this is a very tricky question always asked in the exam so ashutosh where are you man so um, uh, is uh, is uh, urodynamics is uh, mandatory in sui what are the current what are the current uh, uh, current literature and uh, about it so you all guys have read it anybody straight forward case no sir only is related in complicated uh, or uh, if any uh, we suspect uh, associated neurological component then urodynamic study is usually recommended like two time if one time surgery fail or patient is diabetic anal tone is decreased then a urodynamic study should be done yeah so it's not mandatory if it's a genuine stress urinary incontinence it is not mandatory but mixed urinary incontinence always do it if it's associated with urge and if the patient has got previous surgery and if it's suspecting a neurological problem must do it because tot is not the answer for the intrinsic sphincter deficiency which happens only 15% of time but then the slings are not the answer so you must do uh, do a urodynamics and also uh, mixed urinary incontinence we see very often so you must counsel the patient that one type of incontinence that is stress will be take care but aapko urgency ke liye dawa khana hoga usko pehle hi ye cheez bata dena very clearly but under surgery kya doctor saab aapko main to fir urine likha you have to counsel them very much that's all and we said from my side it's too late so i, I pass it over to you sir okay thank you everybody for this fantastic session and all the teachers and the students well prepared nice presentation thank you all again and good night good night sir Good night. Good night. Tomorrow. Uh, Ranjanda, tomorrow. Ranjanda. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Ranjanda, see, I will be traveling at that point. So, Samit, I have already uh, uh, sent my slides to Samit. But uh, mm -hmm. after our session is uh, Tiwari sir session. So, yeah. I will be in airport by twelve o'clock. I will reach Raj. If you allow me, I can present. Uh, uh myself there otherwise i've said to samiran because our session is ending at 11:30 but my friend okay meeting... that is there, there is no problem once you send the slide if you are comfortable you present there is the, i am nobody for tomorrow's program samiran is the uh, boss you yeah. samiran uh, samiran will allow you and he will present ha ne but they have to we have to coordinate with rajesh tiwari sir because yeah, i think please, they have got a euro dynamics program there yeah 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 tomorrow yeah, we are tomorrow we are also having a very important session on uh, renal transplantation at the same time neurogenic bladder with your urodynamic study teachers are of great uh, experience they have they are doing these things day in and day out i think students will learn a lot from them with this hope and with the hope that they have enjoyed today's session um, i say goodbye to all of you i say I say goodbye, goodbye to all of you from my end. Uh, yes. Bye bye. Bye bye. Cutie pie has come. Huh? Yes. Bye bye. Bye bye. Tomorrow, tomorrow, Ranjan. Tomorrow okay. I'll be busy in another meeting at Gaya. So okay. I'm okay. sorry, okay. I may not be present there okay. tomorrow. Okay. 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 Thank, you, thank, okay. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank I you. thank okay. all the students for their active participation okay. and all the teachers individually and personally. Thank I thank them. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Good night. Bye bye. Chalo, 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 chalo.